those charged with protecting our people aren't always able to access the evidence we need to prosecute crime and prevent terrorism, even with lawful authority. We have the legal authority to intercept and access communications and information pursuant to a court order, but we often lack the technical ability to do that. In the never-ending battle for guaranteeing smartphone privacy and creating a sales point that would make them richer than ever before, the announcement that Google and Apple would allow users to encrypt their data with no fear of anybody, even the manufacturers being able to read it, was destined to happen. Now that the future is here, law enforcement has to deal with it and deal with those saying it's every user's constitutional right to hide such material. Law enforcement is not about to give up on something they fear will be a boon to terrorists, sex offenders, and those with more than hiding a few naked pictures in mind. Let's welcome to Midpoint, former FBI special agent in charge. He's been involved in cracking domestic terrorism organizations and is now principal at Dunn Global Solutions. Wayson Dunn joins us. Mr. Dunn, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. What is it when James Comey says we are lacking the technological advances? Is he simply saying at that point that even we as the FBI and those who should be ahead of a lot of the curves here, at the moment at least, we're simply outsmarted by the technology and we've got to catch up? Well, I don't know if outsmart is exactly the word, but technology is advancing so rapidly and capabilities are being developed faster than we can develop the legal countermeasures to those capabilities. And I think what's prompted the current level of concern is the announcement by some companies that they intend to uh, develop and enable uh, encryption uh, for which even they have no key. Uh, and that, that is a real problem because what you're in essence doing is saying we're going to develop uh, a lock that can never be opened except by one person. Uh, even, and if that person happens to lose the key or forget it, uh, nobody can get to it. And that would be a problem because there are circumstances where under court authority, law enforcement has a very legitimate need to gain access to information. So then where do we go from here? And certainly your experience in the FBI has to speak to this. You have a court order in your hand to be able to get into someone's phone. They hand you the phone and they basically smile at you and say, have a wonderful time trying to dig in here. Where do you go from there, though, as an investigator, if you believe you really have a case? Where can you go right now? Well, that's the problem. Uh, if there is truly encryption for which no key exists and the only individual that can give access to that refuses, uh, law enforcement potentially could be in a really, really bad position and lives could potentially be endangered. You know, if the key to uh, someone's safety, if the key to solving a crime, uh, the key to rescuing, for, for example, a kidnapped victim uh, might be locked in a suspect's phone, and even with a court order, you can't get to it, then you're potentially putting lives in danger. How about this? And I wanted to get your opinion on this as well, because this is after uh, Director Comey's remarks here. This was the American Civil Liberties Union criticizing the remarks. They said that the law did not force telecommunications companies to build an avenue for decryption for their products. And it also states that constitutionally, everybody has the right to this. What would be your response to that to the ACLU? Well, two things. First of all, as far as the law goes, uh, the CALEA law, the Communications Assistance to Law Enforcement law that currently exists, does in fact require telecommunications companies to provide assistance to law enforcement. And specifically with regard to the issue of encryption, it says that if they have the key to that encryption, if the encryption is provided by the telecommunications provider and they have the key, then under court order, uh, they are obligated to assist law enforcement. Uh, where we're now running into problems or potential problems is the fact that companies are wanting to develop a, uh, an encryption system for which no key exists. Uh, and heretofore, that's not been an issue. And as far as uh, the constitutionality and the right to privacy, uh, the law enforcement community enthusiastically and rigor rigorously adheres to and respects that which is why all of these, these discussions are dealing with access only under the authority of a court. And when a court deems that law enforcement has a legitimate interest and that interest outweighs an individual's right to privacy, uh, under our system of justice uh, and under our constitutional protections, a court can order, can give law enforcement the authority to access private information. As technologically advanced as Apple and Google and so many of these different companies are, do you believe, honestly, 
that they would be able to hand a phone over to somebody and that even their people couldn't get back in? You know, I think the technology exists, but, but that's an excellent question because I think the technology also exists where you could develop a key that would be sufficiently safe, that would in fact protect people's constitutional right to privacy, but do so in a way that also guarantees that when there are lawful reasons for law enforcement to have access to it, that that access can be granted. How long do you think it'll take? And again, we're all just supposing here, but certainly the NSA, the FBI, CIA, everybody's at work on this already. The, obviously, you would, I would guess you'd think that they're already at work to trying to figure out a way to get into this hack. How long do you think before someone actually hacks this or somebody in our government actually gets into this? Well, I, I wouldn't want to speculate on that, uh, and nor do I have the technical <laughs> do we have, knowledge. Okay, well, let's that. put it this way. Do we have that? That's a good point. Do we have, as law enforcement, the technical knowledge, do you think, to defeat this and get into it one way or another? Well, again, uh, I wouldn't want to speculate on that. But, but what I will say is this. The, the issue is timeliness. Uh, given sufficient time, uh, it's possible uh, and quite possible that uh, – any encryption system can be defeated. But if you're talking about an encryption, encry encryption system such as that being allegedly claimed, that uh, would take years to uh, decrypt with today's technology. And again, I'm basing that only on what I've read in terms of the claims of Apple and Google with regard to the quality of their encryption. If in fact that's true, yes, you can break it, but in, in a situation where uh, lives are potentially at stake, you cannot afford to take years or even months. Uh, there are situations in a law enforcement environment where under court order, it could be a matter of minutes or hours uh, in, in terms of saving someone's life. I only got about 20 seconds left. Personally, do you think that this is just the Snowden effect and one day we are going to see the Snowden effect cost lives? You know, I, I think we will, absolutely. I, I think the, the heightened concerns, and in, in my view, my personal opinion, unfounded concerns uh, about the ability for legitimate law enforcement access to uh, communications and to digital media potentially will impact uh, the ability of law enforcement pr to protect our communities. Indeed. Way send done. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your comments. I'll look forward to the next time. You're welcome. Thank you. Later this hour, see how one man decided to fight the ISIS killers from his driver's seat. It's on Midpoint.